let's talk a little bit about decals because we can do some pretty awesome stuff with them and they're really powerful to be able to use so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna make something uh, like the cracks you just saw appear on the ground let's open up our third person character here and if you want the project file with the finished up material and all the code around it there will be a link down below in the description to the patreon and for youtube members to download the project files as always now for this video what we're going to do is i'm going to add a uh f debug key just for testing purposes and what this is going to do is we're just simply going to uh do a little bit of an explosion and then leave cracks on the ground after the explosion that will after a certain amount of time uh fade away so we'll spawn a Niagara system at location. I already made a Niagara system uh, for the explosion, something relatively uh, quick and easy, but it'll do. So we'll spawn that at the Actos current location, and the rotation and scale will all just be the default. All of this is Niagara stuff, we're not talking about that, but also, when we do this, we want to uh, spawn a decal at location which will be the exact same location as a matter of fact and then we can actually set the decal size so i'm just gonna show you in the world because you can just drag in a decal actor like this and what a decal actor will do is anything within its size it will project the material that you give it onto so this way you can project in this case i think this is like a tile and grass material or something like that uh, the thing that I made, of course, was those cracks. So those will very easily be able to then be placed on literally any surface you want them to. And that includes just rotating them around and, like, putting them potentially, like, on a wall, as you can see back there. So it's a very versatile thing. You can do a lot of cool stuff with it. Uh, you can add a little bit more detail to your environment, all that kind of stuff. Uh, do be aware though that every decal is going to be a draw call in and of itself, so that's not ideal. Uh, but for things that are more gameplay related, especially, I personally do like them. So the decal size will just be uh, these little values down here. So we can set this to whatever we want, and it's going to just scale and stretch this to fit within that size. And since we want to be spawning this in on the ground, uh, we do want the default value of X being zero rotation then y being 90 rotation and then z being zero rotation again because if we just pull in a decal actor again we can see that it has that transform as well then the decal size uh, we can pretty much keep them very thin in this case so let's just do like 30 something and then make them a little bit smaller than this one so like 128 by 128 uh something like that so we can set the decal size to 32 by 128 by 128 and that will be that we can set its lifespan so how long is it going to be around before it starts fading out uh we'll set that to 10 seconds or something for now and now we need to give it a material so let's quickly go ahead and make a material and then we'll come back to this and finish off uh, setting up all of the other values that decals have available for us we're going to make a new material that's just going to copy what i've already made here for the showcase in the beginning of the video so let's call this decal tutorial material and here when we open that up we want to come down into the material domain and change that from surface to deferred decal because of course we're going to be making a decal today we'll immediately get an error uh, saying that we can only use the blend mode translucent alpha composites and modulate uh, we'll just go with translucent because it's the easiest to work with now I just brought in a uh, cracks texture that I got from Google. Uh, so you can do whatever you want with this. Uh, if you have your own textures, uh, that's even better. This particular one is actually uh, the wrong way around, though, because uh, I'm going to use this as an alpha mat. And as you can see, everything is white except for the cracks. Uh, we want that to be the other way around. So we just one minus that. And that just makes it a negative. There's one little annoying thing about... Uh, working on decal materials and that's that's a kind of hard to like preview so generally what might be a good way to do this is to develop the material itself in a normal surface context so that we can actually see everything and then change it to deferred decal at the very end so if we put this into the opacity now we can see that we have a bunch of cracks so that's a pretty good start i also want to have a radial 
gradient exponential because I'm going to use this to then multiply with so that we have the round projection that we had uh, in the beginning of the video because otherwise it's going to have these harsh edges so we can just say hey multiply that with our gradient exponential and then we can give it a higher density to have the edge still be somewhat sharper so something like five and that gets us a somewhat sharper edge which looks a lot better maybe even higher than this to be honest like eight something like that looks pretty good now we can also uh, like i did in my example uh, add in two colors and just lerp in between those uh to match the alpha that's the easiest way to add a little bit more color detail to this so we'll add a yellowish color for the like the hottest parts of our cracks and then as they cool down so as there's less saturation or less opacity rather uh they will cool down a little bit and they will become this darker red color and we can just put that into a loop so the bottom one here is going to be at an alpha of one and the top one will be what happens at alpha zero and if we then just put that into the alpha and that goes into the base color we now get and do make sure you actually use the rgb pin and not just a red pin because that's going to save you a lot of headache uh, i made a mistake there and immediately that looks a lot better we can uh, just make a, a scalar parameter here by holding that s and clicking and we'll call that something like opacity for now just to demonstrate we're going to set this uh, to a value between one and zero and then the thing that we're using currently for our opacity we're going to subtract one from that and then we're going to add something else to it and what we're going to be adding will be our opacity so if we do this and then we put that into the alpha for the lerp and into the opacity for the material itself we now so now we have uh, this whole thing, which we have one parameter for that will just kind of fade this in and out in a more satisfying, more visually pleasing way than just lowering and raising the opacity. So that's how we can basically set up a decal. So now let's go back into here. Now that we have a material for that, we can choose the decal tutorial material and this will now spawn in the decal as well. From there, we can set a bunch of information. We can set the decal fade in, fade out, some screen size and sort order stuff that doesn't really matter. We're going to set the fade in with a duration of like 0.1. We want to have a little bit of a fade in there. And for this case, we don't want to have any start delay. And then we can uh, fade out. We can say how long the uh, fade should take. This one will be a lot longer at about half a second and we can say how long it should stay around before it starts fading out so we have uh, this thing saying that we want to fade out after like six seconds that's going to take half a second but it's actually um the lifespan of the decal is set to 10 seconds here if you want it to stay around for any reason uh, we want to disable destroy owner after fade but for this case we want to actually just destroy the decal uh, after the fade is done so now that we have all of that set up it will uh, spawn in the particles it will spawn in the decal it will fade it in and then after a certain amount of time it will also fade it out but fading it in and out actually requires us to do some more stuff in the material so let's go back into our material and there we can use the decal lifetime opacity that's just a value that the decal gives to the material that it's using and this is just a value from zero to one uh, which is opacity so we can quite simply just multiply our opacity value uh, by this or just replace it honestly that also works and now we will note that we get a error because we haven't set our uh, domain back to being a deferred decal so let's do that real quick and now everything should work so with all of that we can now say hey we want to press the f key it does the thing and now it's projecting the decal right onto the player which is not exactly what we want what we want is not to spawn it in at the player's location we actually want to spawn it in at the ground uh below the player so that's actually relatively easy we can just do a line trace by channel we'll start that at the player location and we will end it at the player location plus a vector uh that is multiplied 
by a float, so the vector is going to be 0, 0, minus 1, so that's pointing down, and then we're going to change this pin into a float instead, and we're going to say, hey, we want to trace for like 500 units or something like that. And that's going to be the end position. We'll split up the uh, line tracer output there, and we'll get the out hit location, and we'll actually spawn in the decal there instead. So now when we try that again, we can see we spawn in the decal and the particles at our feet. And then after a certain amount of time, we should see the decal slowly start to, there we go, disappear. And the funny thing is that we can uh, also spawn it in here now, and you can see it spawns in on the edge. This is the reason why I wanted the decal to be relatively thin, because it does get stretched out on surfaces that it's not aligned to properly. So that's the reason that I wanted it to be uh, relatively thin. So let's actually make it even thinner than it is right now. Let's just make it like five units thin. Very, very thin, so that it only really projects onto the floor itself. You can see it works there. And if we now go up to this corner, if I don't fall off it, that is, uh, you can see the stretchiness is now a lot less. And that looks a lot better already. Now, just to add a little bit of extra fun to it, uh, I added something else to the other material, which is quite fun. I added a little bit of like a pulsing feeling to it and the way we do that is quite simply by adding a sine node or a cosine node it really doesn't matter uh, that takes a time input and if we expand this it also takes in a period and this is just a sine wave going from negative one to positive one in this time period uh, i think i set mine to four and a half seconds or so then we're going to remap that value from being negative one to one uh, instead to something like uh, 0.8 to 1.2. This is the easiest way uh, to get a relatively subtle kind of like pulsing effect that we have. And then we can just simply uh, use the output from that to multiply the brightness of our colors that go into our base color. You will know that these go into the base color, but the decal itself actually uh, does emit light, even though it doesn't go into the emissive color. You can put it into the emissive color, but you don't need to in this case. And then we also want to multiply this before we do the addition of the uh, height lerp with that output as well. So we put in a multiply node there too, and take the output from our remap, multiply that. And that then gives us a little bit more uh, just visual interest in the fact that it's now also doing a little bit of like this pulsing thing. You can see it's going a little bit overboard here now because we're adding uh, some more stuff to our height loop, which is kind of freaking out because of it. If it happens to you, just make sure that your target high in your remapping uh, doesn't go beyond one. Uh, sometimes you get away with it, sometimes you don't, but now you can see uh, this does much better of a job and has a little bit of that movement in it, which just makes it a lot more interesting to look at instantly. So I hope that this gives you a decent idea as to how you can use decals to make some really, really cool effects and just make your game more visually interesting. There's a lot of interesting stuff that you can do with this. We might look into more in the future, but this is the basics of how you can use decals. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. And a special thanks to my Cave Digger tier patrons, Sergey Thomas, 